So uh, starting rotation, yeah. uh, I know maybe going into um, you know January, maybe you have an idea in the back of your mind. You got to see how it all plays out through preseason. Um, what did you see, and, and how did you make the decision uh, to decide who starts Friday through Sunday of the first weekend? Yeah, you know, just Rudy has been our our best guy from start to finish. Um, obviously, what he did last year um, to finish the season and really uh, the growth that he made, and obviously getting healthy and. Uh, and then he just carried that over his leadership ability, just uh, relationship he's built with. I think everybody on the team and just his stuff has been um, tremendous. And so uh, we just really felt like he deserved uh, his age, his experience. Um, just felt like he he gave us the best shot to win um, and, and deserves to pitch on Friday. So uh, excited for him. Um, you know, Cam Leiter. You know, obviously been heralded, but just um, been a great great addition and obviously has a really really bright future but has really pitched really really well his stuff the uh, his moxie on the mound is is the maturity kind of beyond his years and uh, in terms of how he goes about the process and, and getting out there and um, you know obviously Dom Stagliano's pitched really really well freshman all-american in Stetson last year uh, transferred in is competitive throws a ton of strikes was able to keep guys off balance did a great job for us um, you know especially here um, the last few weeks uh, and just really kept our hitters off balance and we just felt like you know he, he was the best guy um, for the job and um, and so kind of excited for those three guys to go out we, we feel deep uh, we don't have to put too much pressure on any of them there's a lot of good a good good arms um, that are going to be able to help us at the back end and um, you know, it felt like those three guys gave us the best shot to, to win the games. With Rudy, he pitched a lot last season, but didn't necessarily, he wasn't really a starter. Right. He started one game. Yeah. I know he had long outings and everything. Yeah. So what did you see from him maybe that you feel like, you know, feel comfortable in him making that transition to be, you know, a regular yeah, I mean, starter? I, obviously, he had some four or five inning outings, even in relief. Yeah. Um, uh, but he started before in his career. We worked him as a starter the entire fall, knowing just that the stuff and the body and the ability – uh, was 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 very starterish. Um, we just obviously last year, just not being cleared until around this time, like to be to be able to pitch in a game, and and then again, I think just last year trying to feel comfortable in the brace and and you know just getting over the block of getting back on the field and whatnot the first half of the year, and uh, and then the second half of the year we just felt like he was so so. Um, so needed at the back end of the game that we just had to keep him in the bullpen. Um, but obviously, just losing losing some of the guys that we lost and, and really needing guys to step up as a starter, uh, we felt like we wanted to give him every opportunity to earn that job. And so I don't know if I thought, hey, Rudy's going to be our Friday night guy going into the season. Like we, when we started the fall, it was more like, hey, let's let's give all these guys the opportunity. And, and Rudy was one of them just from ability and stuff. And um, you know, from from day one, though, that he's been back. There's been a, a just a great leader, and um, you know, we just felt like we had guys at the back end um, that could handle it, where we could use him uh, as a starter and really, um, really give us a chance to win every game that he starts. And media day, asking all the guys about you know who's looking good, who are you excited to see play? Everybody, like literally everybody, mentioned Cam Lighter. Yeah. Obviously, everyone knows his last name. They know you know what he was coming in here. Uh, his rating and all that stuff. But what have you seen now, now that you've had him on campus for a little while? Uh, what kind of talent does he have? Yeah, I mean, it's elite talent. I mean, you just don't see many freshmen coming in, throwing, you know, with his kind of velocity, his kind of his breaking ball is, is elite. Um, but he has the ability to throw change-ups in any count. So he's a, a true three-pitch mix. Um, but for me, it's just the, the – the, it's really weird because he, he – when he – I mean, crosses the lines, the maturity is just um, different than most freshmen. I think that, um, you know, he's still oh, in the dugout and all that, still still has that, that young that young kind of attitude and, yeah. and, and maturity level. Um, but it's different. When I went out to watch his first bullpen, just listening to him talk was just different. Um, just the way that he talks about the game, the way he talks about pitching, the way that he just talked in his bullpen about how he was – um, what he was trying to work on, what he was trying to do, what he was seeing. It was just very, you know, senior-like, you know what I mean, where a guy that has been and, and, and is kind of, you know, most of the time freshmen get up there and it's just about trying to, how hard can I throw it. And, you know, they're really just kind of going through the motions, I guess you would say, of just 
how many pitches am I throwing? 20, okay, 20 pitches. I'm just going to go try to throw 20 pitches instead of there being a process and a mindset. And so just seeing that maturity on how he talks the game, uh, how he competes. And then when you add that with the stuff, which is already elite, like you just, you just put yourself in a good situation to be, to be really good right away. And so, um, and just the competitiveness, like when he gets on the mound, like it, you just see it kind of the light switch goes on in terms of he is locked in and ready to go and is out there to try to to try to really do some damage. What was his recruiting process like? Uh, uh, it was interesting, kind of... you know. I his story, and my story, might be a little bit different because you know it's really okay. hard to understand. But he obviously grew up in Canada, uh, yeah. so it was like an unknown um, during COVID or right before COVID or right after COVID ends up moving to Jersey, which is a lot of their family is, right. uh, is stationed at. Um, and, uh, so it just kind of comes on the scene and, um, I don't know if he reached out to me on Twitter or like, I just saw him on Twitter, saw the name, kind of the body. Yeah. And you're just kind of like, okay, like, you know, Northeastern kids, like, you know, especially arm wise are, are a little bit late bloomers, but they're also less stress on them, like mileage on their arms. So, you know, obviously just intrigued by it all. So just somehow we, again, whoever was the first contact, yeah. I, I, I mean, if I just saw him and we, the team that he played for, we, we knew the guy that ran the, the summer ball team. So just reached out to him and get some information. And then obviously just started the recruiting process, but obviously he's made a, 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 a huge jump here late, just coming to the States and just playing baseball more. And, and you know, we're obviously Canada baseball is not like a, a big thing where you gotta you know, there's no high school baseball it's more about really? you know okay. or yeah i don't i don't is if it, it is travel it's, ball or just yeah it's more like, travel yeah. ball so it's like you play for ontario blue jays or you play for the okay uh, i mean there's a couple big organizations where i, I think he was drive you, mean, you have to drive like an hour to yeah. like practice and all that kind of stuff and so um it's just not as big i mean yeah. it, it's hockey and, and that kind of stuff so you really kind of got to find the right group of people to kind of be with and and whatnot. So, uh, but then coming to the states and 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 being able to play every day, I just he's made a lot of a lot of gains. But obviously the the family has a lot to do with that too. I think yeah. he um, you can just tell he's been around baseball players and has talked baseball at a, yeah. at a different level than most kids. Yeah. What is Ben Besby's role going to be early on? Yeah. You know, Ben is is not going to be available opening weekend. Okay. So he just was a little sore, more sore than we would want. Everything has been fine. He's um, he's been throwing the last three days, and looks a hundred percent. So he's just behind in terms of because he got a slower start, just because we held him back, just didn't want to push him too hard, and and um, and uh, you know get him hurt really. Um, yeah. We just felt like we don't need him opening day. I'd rather have him make sure that he's healthy for the rest of the season. I'd rather him miss one outing or one start and then be able to come back and be ready to go so um i don't know if he'll be back week two um i'm hoping he is like he's on plan to do that yeah. obviously there's got to be no most setbacks or anything like that but he'll be getting really geared up bullpens like 100 percent like but he, he like i said he's thrown the last four or five days at 100 percent, no problems um but again just not trying to push him too yeah hard. if he was 100 percent, would he have been in that weekend starter yeah, mix or yeah yeah figures much yeah. yeah yeah so he'll just be out this weekend so. and hopefully back next weekend i mean we know some of the names obviously ben mccabe's been here forever you know tom joston nick romano is healthy what are some of the other positions that maybe it may not have known two or three weeks ago how it was going to shape out but maybe made a decision here yeah in the last week um, i don't know if i've officially made a decision okay. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta get down but i mean obviously andrew Brate, who's been in the program for forever yeah uh, obviously had some ups and downs with injuries but just again a guy that every time that he's been on the field or in practice his entire career I mean, he started half the games at shortstop as a true freshman and, and then obviously gets hits in the hit in the face which really just slowed the development down his sophomore year and then the shoulder surgery last year but every time he's on the field he's he's a plus defender uh it gives us that that infield defense that we really feel like we've missed especially at third base the last few years uh, really since Cam Gellinger. I mean, we, we've really had the th we've thrown catchers out there. I mean, we've really mixed it up. Uh, but to really have we feel like a plus defender at third base, uh, Drew Ferro, uh, shortstop, you know, uh, has done a great job, super talented kid that, um, you know, again, has a lot of the same um, tools as, as Alex Freeland. Um, Tom Joseph obviously has done such a great job for us. Nick Romano, Ben McCabe, obviously kind of the, the infield. Cole Russo has had a great couple of weeks for us, is really, you know, be able to kind of share the catching duties, maybe play a little first base if I don't want Roe to, to, to really stress stress his legs too much. Um, and DH, um, and Lex Bodecker, who obviously started yeah. every game last year. So, you know, a couple outfield spots, obviously Corey Robinson, John Rice, and, 
and then Brady Shannon, you know, just trying to probably get all those guys in the game and give them yeah. you know, a few starts this weekend and try to mix it up and, and, and give guys some opportunities and, and get some matchups in there and, um, you know, give, give, give ourselves a see them compete against other teams and whatnot. So, um, I mean, I think that's kind of the, the group of guys right now that you're really looking at of, of playing this weekend. And, um, but you just never know, you know, again, this time last year, um, I think Andrew Sundin was like my 18th hitter at 18. Yeah. I think he ends up having a monster year for us. So you just know, I always tell the kids like you, the opening day lineup is never the same lineup that happens in, in the conference yeah. tournament. So what is the bullpen looking like? You know, long relief closer. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Kyle Kramer will go in as the closer yeah. this, uh, this weekend. Uh, he just deserves it. Obviously had six days, been great in practice. Um, Zach Austin has really made some strides. You know, we talked about him having the kind of one of the best, you know, top two or three stuff on the team, uh, just transitioning from being a position guy and then being a dual guy and now com just focusing on being a pitcher. Um, he's had a really great, uh, you know, M Mike and him have really meshed and I really kind of helped him with the command. So, um, you know, I think he'll be in there in the eighth inning. Uh, Najir Victor uh, has been unbelievable, uh, just elite stuff. So, I mean, he's going to be there in, in the eighth inning. Uh, Chase Santala gives us some some depth uh, right there in the seventh and eighth inning. Uh, Nick Vieira, who's he's come back from the injury last year and been great all fall and and, and good in January. So um, I think those guys will will kind of right now going into the opening weekend are going to be like the 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 front line guys at the back end of the of the, of the game. Is is Victor? Is that kind of his role, or do you think he could be like a starter? I mean, I think he's going to be like a swing guy for us. Um, right. You know, just I you know he can do it all. Um, and uh, I, I feel like he's going to be the guy that might throw three or four innings one day, and he might, you know, throw the eighth inning and one inning one day. So okay. uh, he'll probably have multiple roles, that swing role, where you feel like you can extend him. He started at this level, but the stuff is so elite at the back end. Um, you really have that power stuff uh, between him and Austin and Kramer. That's three guys at the end that have real true power stuff, especially, I mean, Kramer stuff isn't is elite. It's just, um, it's just he's able to execute and, and – the short arm action really makes it hard to pick up. So um, you mix that with two guys that have elite power stuff um, at the end. Like it, it just gives you a lot of faith knowing that they don't put as much pressure on the starters where, hey, if you give me four or five innings, like we got we got three, four or five guys at the back end that, you know, can go one inning each. And, and then again, if the day calls for it, that Najir can go extra, then we know that he can do that as well. Was the makeup of the non-conference schedule? Uh, you guys obviously are reasonably tough schedule anyway, but was that by design to kind of beef it up, or just kind of ended up that way with some of these Sun Belt teams, you yeah. know, maybe performing better than you might have even yeah. thought? Yeah, I mean, it just kind of ends up the way. You know, yeah. it's so hard. To, it's just like football, where you're you're playing, you're scheduling years in advance. You know, the home and home with Troy. That, um, you know, that that they've obviously had really good good couple years obviously Georgia Southern yeah. like has been amazing last year being able to host and they get most of their team back uh, Maryland the same thing I mean they're they, I mean they host a regional and, and they get most of their guys back so um, it, it's just kind of the way it works out okay. you know, it's really hard to look three four years down the line and know how good teams are going to be you know what I mean so but I'm excited I mean I think challenging ourselves is is, is big and uh, being able to play at Clemson in a, in a regional type atmosphere on the road which we've, we've tried to do every year so um, um, you know, it's going to be challenging, but I think also think we have the team that can that can handle it. What is what is the process, or you know, when you have to switch a pitching coach, kind of in the middle? You yeah. know, usually guys would have been here in the fall. You yeah. can kind of work out the kinks and get familiar with the guys. And he comes in in January. Are there some challenges with that? Oh, huge! Uh, it's totally not ideal. Um, just from being able to, you know, you. You want him to have his voice, but at the same time, it's like, man, you can't. Change we got to be. Yeah, you can't yeah. change too much. Yeah. Like, you got to come in, and, and he's done. A, Mike's done a great job. I mean, just has a, a great understanding of that. That was part of the interview process when interviewing people. Was like, look, like, you got to understand what the process, what the situation is, and and how you're going to handle it. And 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 that was a big part of who, you know people that I was interested in or not interested in is did I feel comfortable with them being able to come in and kind of utilize. The, the team that we have we're not trying to make major changes but can you can you get in there and and and, and make small changes and also build the relationships and and because at the end of the day like the kids the kids want to know that you care but at the same time they're going to want to trust you before they kind of just listen to whatever you got to say so um but being able to come in and just make 
kind of the slight changes and just try to help where you can, but at the same time not make sweeping changes. And so it was it was tough. I mean, it was a lot of work, I think, just all of us trying to get Mike on board and, and, and up to speed, him trying to watch video and learn, like, the guys and, and what he was getting um, before the first bullpen. I mean, literally had, I think, six days to try to figure it out. Um, so it was just a lot of probably long nights of watching video, trying to get a feel, me trying to fill him in on what we have and, um, you know, what, where guys were at and, you know, what, but at the same time, not giving him too information where I didn't want him to have any preconceived notions, yeah. right? So, um, but just done a great job of just kind of, you know, if you, he's such a, a great dude, like, so it's, it's really hard for kids not to like him, right? So he's able to get into that situation and, and really build relationships and the guys have been, been positive and, um, you know, he's made some, some positive strides with some guys and uh, really just getting them, just tweaking them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And again, no overhauls, no major changes, but being able to put his kind of tweaks in there, things, a different set of eyes, which is kind of interesting, you know what I mean? Like he's yeah. never, this time of year, do you get a separate, a new set of eyes to be able to look at look at somebody and be like, okay, well, I, I see where they're going. Can we could just do this and this to make me maybe speed up the process or make them better? Um, and he's been able to do that and it's been a huge help for us, I think. I need to replace the fences in the fall. Did yeah. the height go up a little bit on some of those? So on the right center field gap is the okay. only one. So okay. the rest of the fences are all the same. Okay. But the right center. You wear everything, guys, but sometimes flip over. Flip over, yeah. which is just a danger. And obviously fans can reach over, which yeah. then becomes an issue if did they interfere and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, But at the same time, just that kind of like that atmosphere out there. Yeah. People ain't hanging out. So this just gives the ability, you know, people. You pull, should kind of cut a window in there. Right. Yeah. So instead of people having to pull their cars up and get on top of their trucks or whatever now they can actually hang out back there and 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 watch the game through the through the outfield fence but still giving him the outfielder some padded you know to make sure that they don't get hurt and and to you know kind of keep the sponsorship stuff up and just to look nice so yeah. um so i think i think it came out great uh you know i'm excited to kind of see what people think when they get out there and watch the game from out there i've always thought like baseball's kind of been on the cutting edge of branding here at uc yeah. with the citronaut and now you know kind of there's Orlando jersey yeah. you wore at Fan Fest. Like, what do you think about stuff like that? It's, I love it. It's a cool I mean, look. I, yeah, I, I, I love that jersey. I love that look. And I love I love trying to be on the cutting edge and being the first to do things and, um, you know, kind of taking a lot of pride in that. And um, and so I love those Orlando jerseys. I think they came out great. I think they look great. And, you know, I just think it's going to be Orlando's hometown baseball yeah. team. I mean, there's no, there's no baseball anywhere near here uh, with all the minor league teams that have left. Like, um, you know, I really feel like this is kind of shows what we feel like we are and that you know, we have an opportunity. If, if you love baseball, like, uh, you don't have to go far to be able to come and watch really, really high quality baseball uh, right here in town. So uh, I felt like it fit the fit the mantra and fit the look and, and kind of what we're trying to accomplish and what we feel like we can mean to the community. And um, so I'm kind of excited for, you know, obviously everyone got a kind of a sneak peek. Yeah. But I'm excited to go rock them and we're going to rock them opening day and, cool. and go from there and then might be a surprise for Saturday too. Okay, okay. I know uh, obviously it focuses on this year, but I know you said immediate day then you're gonna have thirty conference games in the Big Twelve. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the future of the USF series? Is that a, a game you still yeah, want to play? Are you, are yeah, you friendly we're, with the we're gonna we're gonna keep it. Uh, Billy and I have talked a lot about it and just think that it's a good for the game of baseball, good for both our programs, good for the rivalry. Um, you know, and obviously we're going to build some new rivalries, I think, you know, eventually. But to keep that going for the for the foreseeable future, we just thought was was a big part of it. So we're going to make sure that we continue to play every year. And uh, that'd be a midweek or if there's the plan is to week? play a weekend, the weekend, play a weekend okay. series. Yeah, just kind of the way Florida, Miami does it, the way okay. Georgia, Georgia Tech, Clemson, North uh, South Carolina, like those kind of teams like that are playing every year for a weekend series. So uh, we're going to try to keep it, keep it and be able to play three games and probably rotate, rotate homes um, every year. And uh, that way both teams get to get to play at home against each other. So does that kind of change your scheduling philosophy? You got 30 now. You never had that many conference games. Yeah, I mean, It's weird just cause you don't, you know, I'm usually, you know, non-conference games are the hardest to, yeah. you know, to tie everyone wants to play at home. You're trying to, you know, set it up. So to have six weekends, um, gives you a lot of flexibility. It's also difficult to get six weekends. Now you're talking about three, really now two with the South Florida plus a bye week somewhere in there. So, um, you know, it, it it is what it is. You're just gonna play the games, and you know, you got you got to win games against good teams. So, um, you know, we'll figure out a way to get get a couple of teams in here in, in non-conference, and and then obviously the, the South Florida weekend, but. You know, a long way to go till we get there. Yeah, yeah. No. Last thing, just kind of, what are you most looking forward to? You know, this weekend, the next couple of weeks, to kind of see how it translates. You know, what maybe what are your biggest questions? Like, what do you kind of want to see uh, 
the season gets um, going here? What do you, you know, think? I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. You know, it's in practice, you, when you're playing each other, it's really hard to gauge, like, where you're at. You know, as a head coach, if we pitch really well in a practice, I'm worried about our hitting. And if we hit really well, I'm worried about our pitching. And so it's really hard to get a gauge of where you're truly at until you get to play somebody else and see where your true weaknesses are. And uh, sometimes you're like, man, like, can we really pitch or can we not hit? And you just don't know that. Yeah. Um, and so when you get to play somebody else, you get a little bit of a gauge of where we're at. And you want like to see how the young guys do, especially the guys that haven't been here, like Drew and John Rice and 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 Brady and and Corey. Um, and, and then again from some guys in in the in the in the bullpen like Zach Austin and Najir, just seeing what those guys look like when the lights come on and and seeing how we look in as a team when the lights come on and play somebody else and um, you know just. Go out, play the best we can on Friday, make some adjustments and and whatnot, and can go back out and do it again on Saturday, and, and just keep that that trajectory. Can we get better through the weekend, and then can we keep that trajectory till the end of the year? You feel pretty good about this team. I, mean, it, I do. I mean, I think it's a good mix, um, just with age and experience and and talent. Like it, it, it uh, you know, you you feel like you're in a good spot and have a lot of those good things. I also like last year's team, and then you know we lost seven of our top ten guys. So I also know that we gotta we gotta stay healthy and we gotta continue to grow. And um, you know, they told the kids like we don't they don't give out regional bursts or championship rings on on February seventeenth. So um, we got we gotta worry about just getting better. We gotta worry about trying to trying to win as many games as we possibly can and put ourselves in the best situation at the end of the year. But you really feel like you got a good a good start when you just add the age and the talent and the experience that we have. Right. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Brandon.